What do you do if your wag starts smoking? Slow down and use some lubricant. Today, I'm going to recap a 2017 action thriller film called Atomic Blonde. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Berlin, November 1989. MI6 agent James Gassiogny is running through the streets as he is being chased by someone in a car. They catch up to him and slam him into another car before pinning Gassiogny between the two. His attacker Yuri Bakhtin steps out of the car. Gassiogny quips about hoping his killer would be someone else before Bakhtin shoots him in the head. Bakhtin takes the watch off Gassiogny's wrist and then dumps his body in the river. Ten days later, another agent, Lorraine Broughton, emerges from a tub of ice water covered in bruises. She then heads to a debriefing with her superior, Eric Gray, and CIA agent Emmett Kersfeld. Behind the two-way mirror is MI6 head Chief C, listening in on the conversation. In the time since Gassiogny's death, both MI6 and the CIA have been trying to track down the list, which contains the information of active Soviet field agents. It is mentioned that Gassiogny was betrayed by an agent named Konrad Satchel, who sold classified information to the Soviets. We will back to the day after Gassiogny's murder. It suggested that he and Lorraine were intimately involved. She is sent to Berlin to get the list and kill Satchel. Lorraine is to meet with her contact, David Percival. Percival is introduced in a bar where he meets with a Stasi officer codenamed Spyglass, who is set to defect to the West. Spyglass knows information about the list, and Percival wants answers. KGB arms dealer Alexander Bramovich is after the list for himself. He confronts a group of street punks brought to him by his henchmen who claim to have seen Spyglass. Bramovich beats one of the punks and orders his men to find Spyglass. Lorraine touches down in Berlin and is escorted by two men to meet with Percival, only for her to quickly realize that the two are KGB agents working for Bramovich, meaning she has been compromised. Lorraine attacks one of the men using her shoe before causing the driver of their car to crash. She then meets Percival, who was driving behind them and witnessed the whole thing. He proceeds to join her in their mission. Unbeknownst to her, Lorraine is being watched by a mysterious woman from a distance. During her stay in Berlin, Lorraine makes contact with the watchmaker, an ally of MI6 who also happens to tinker with watches. Lorraine goes to Gassiogny's apartment, where she finds photos of himself with Percival. Soon, police officers enter the building, forcing Lorraine to take them on. She beats them all down with her fists and some cable before using it to swing out a window, while it's wrapped around an officer's neck. Back in the debriefing, Lorraine mentions that she considered that Percival had sent them since he was the only other person that knew she would go to the apartment. Lorraine later goes to a bar where she meets a French operative, Delphine Lazal, the woman who was following Lorraine earlier. The two start talking before going somewhere private. Delphine kisses Lorraine, but Lorraine has been suspicious of Delphine's intentions. She presses her against the wall and questions why she's been looking for her. When Delphine proves to not be a threat, she and Lorraine begin to hook up. Bacton resurfaces and meets with the watchmaker to try and sell Gassiogny's watch, which is what contains the list. Bacton tries to approach Percival with the watch in hand, but Percival sticks an ice pick in Bacton's head and takes the list for himself. He inspects the watch himself and sees the names of all the agents. Percival tries to help Lorraine escort Spyglass to West Berlin. To Lorraine's surprise, Spyglass's wife and child have come along. They attempt to obscure Spyglass through the streets as KGB agents are scoping them out. Percival then turns and shoots Spyglass in the gut. Lorraine then takes him into an apartment complex to avoid being spotted. KGB agents then start to attack, forcing Lorraine to fight all of them going down the stairwell. This carries out onto the streets as Lorraine tries to drive away with Spyglass, only to keep being found by agents. Lorraine's car falls into the river, and although she tries to save him, Spyglass perishes. Delphine gets in touch with Percival after learning his true motives. She had been photographing him with Gassiogny and is developing the pictures when Percival sneaks into her apartment and tries to strangle her with a garrote. Delphine tries to fight him, but she is killed. Lorraine shows up too late and finds Delphine's body. Lorraine later finds Percival after he has burned down his safe house. She shoots him once and determines he was Satchel. Percival declares his love for Berlin before Lorraine puts a bullet in his head. She then takes the list from him. We return to the present as Lorraine finishes the debriefing. 
She presents Gray and Kurzfeld with the photos of Percival and audio recordings to prove her as a traitor. When asked if she knows where the list is now, Lorraine denies it. Gray then closes the case. Three days later, Lorraine goes to Paris and meets with Promovich under the guise of giving him the list. Promovich knows Lorraine is not who she says she is, and a bunch of his men begin to surround her. Lorraine pulls her gun out of an ice bucket and begins to unload on all the goons before leaving Promovich for last. She drops her British accent, revealing she was Satchel all along, having been a triple agent with the CIA. She finally kills Promovich. The film concludes with Lorraine joining Kurzfeld on a plane back to the States. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy, hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching.